Hello for this nice introduction and welcome everyone to this webinar uh, on our report on business models for building integrated photovoltaics. Uh, as Fernando mentioned, my name is uh, Michael Ritson or Michiel in Dutch and I'm an uh, operating agent of Task 15 and I will zoom out a little bit towards the International Energy Agency, give a short introduction on the International Energy Agency the uh, PVPS technological collaboration program and then I will hand over the floor to Philippe who will go into depth and uh, talk about talk about the report on business models so the International Energy Agency consists of about 30 members it's founded after the first oil crisis and initially it was uh, uh, organized in such a way to respond to, respond to the oil crisis and to uh, the disruptions in the oil supply. But nowadays we see more and more that the IEA is focusing on renewable energy technologies and giving policy recommendations uh, through a variety of gremia such as the technological collaboration programs. And the IEA works to ensure reliable, affordable, and clean energy for all its 30 members. So there is a large number of uh, technological collaboration programs covering the following aspects like buildings, electricity, industry, transport, fossil fuels, fusion powers, and renewable energy technologies. And the technological collaboration program EVPS photovoltaic power systems is part of the renewable energy technologies. So in PVPS, and it's one of the biggest uh, TCPs of the IEA, it's already running since uh, 1993. And uh, at this moment, we have a number of tasks, as we call them, projects running, focusing on strategy and communication, uh, PV in developing countries, the sustainability of PV, uh, grid integration of PV, quality of PV and uh, one of the tasks is uh, focusing on PIPV and that is the task of which I'm the operating agent and Philippe is one of the main contributors. So if we zoom out a little bit uh, to the PV background we see of course that the PV installation capacity, installed capacity is growing very fast nowadays and approximately 70,000 PV panels are placed worldwide every hour. And Philippe will talk a little bit more about it as well, but you can see in this scheme a very steep inclination of PV installation worldwide. And in this slide you can see the developing the development of PV application throughout all the countries worldwide. So we see a very strong increase in PV application worldwide and of course the building industry and the construction industry building energy uh, cons uh, consumption is still increasing which you can see here the energy is still increasing if you look at the energy in, uh, in total totally used in buildings but Per square meter, the energy consumption is decreasing. So kilowatt hours per square meter, energy consumption is decreasing. And if you look at the energy consumption in buildings, you see in some cases that PV in buildings really is low hanging fruit, for instance, for space cooling, for appliances and other equipment, for lighting, this can be easily uh, generated by PV. These are all appliances running on electricity and for instance in a number of countries water heating, cooking and space heating is still done with fossil fuels such as gas or oil or even coal. But this is what we call the low hanging fruit concerning PV in buildings. So the question then is, is this the root? Of course, we think not so. We think that if you create uh, PV insulations like these, you will get the effect of NOMER, as we call it. And NOMER is comparable to the NIMBY effect, 
that you have a, a societal resistance towards a technological solution. It's called not on my roof. So people do not want to see these solutions because they're not contributing to an aesthetic valuable uh, built environment. Neither are they well integrated from a technological uh, uh, perspective, both considering building technology and uh, energy. So we want to have a very nice, beautiful built environment that with technical, logical solutions. And that is, of course, BIPV. But if you look at the world uh, uh, market penetration of the BIPV, it's still, still a very small market penetration. And these numbers, they vary a little bit. But if we look at, OK, how come that this market penetration is still so small? There are a number of uh, um, barriers defined uh, in the, in the, on the path towards BIPV adoption like the constructural integration of, uh, of BIPV, maintenance and recycling, economical barriers, regulatory barriers, design integration. So there are a number of barriers defined. And in our task 15, we try to enable a framework for the acceleration of BIPV. So we looked at these main barriers, and we defined a work pro program how to overcome these barriers. And we, uh, we defined it not to create a grand vision on BIPV or re reaching grid parity, but it's more about the basic conditions that, it is met, that are necessary for upscaling the small market, uh, small BIPV markets and products towards large market penetration. And we define three market boundaries. So we, in our task, we look at residential rooftop situations, tertiary building called facades and industrial lightweight structures. So focusing on the biggest, the three biggest uh, BIPV market potentials. And in the task, we've divided the work uh, focusing on different target audiences. So we have five subtasks. In the first subtask A, we look at uh, aesthetic and uh, market readiness of uh, different case studies. Subtask B. We look at the business case development of BIPV. In subtask C, we look at the regulatory issues. In subtask D, we look at the environmental issues of BIPV. And in subtask E, we uh, uh, interact on the research and development of BIPV activity worldwide. So to zoom, to zoom in very briefly in these uh, five subtasks, so subtask A, the goal is to disseminate disseminate uh, BIPV experiences, so not looking only at exemplary BIPV uh, projects, but really at projects that be, can be copied and scaled up worldwide. So we now define 20 projects from 10 countries, and we're already in the progress of making a final PDF book in which everyone can see these projects and get all the information to learn from it and to copy these uh, uh, projects towards uh, his or her, her own situation. In subtask B, the goal is to develop uh, feasible business models um, uh, with the potential for replication and economies of skill. And Philippe will zoom into that uh, during his talk. In subtask C, the goal is to develop an international framework for BIPV specifications and policy recommendations. And this work is split up into a number of work packages, so looking at the definition of BIPV, because there's still some uh, discussion worldwide on this definition, an analysis of user needs and functions, uh, BIPV technological uh, requirements, the multifunctionality of BIPV, and a suggestion for international collaboration for exchange between different standardization activities. In subtask D, the goal is to develop an international methodology for a life cycle analysis of BIPV. And in subtask E, that's called applied research and the development for the implementation of BIPV, we start with an inventory of existing BIPV field test sites. This inventory is already finished and published. And continuing on that work, we started a round robin, uh, round robin testing of a BIPV solution in all these participating countries. 
uh, we're looking at installation and maintenance issues uh, throughout all the participating countries. We're looking at the diversity of products and the performance analysis. So that is very briefly uh, what we are doing in the International Energy Agency in general and in PVPS Task 15 specifically. And we already have a number of reports uh, available. You can find them back on uh, the website of the IEA PVPS. And with this very short introduction on IEA, the technological collaboration programs, and task 15, I would like to give the floor, although we're doing this by phone and computer, I would I'd like to give the floor to uh, Philip. Uh, thank you, Mikhil, uh, for this introduction, and thank you also, Fernando. Um, so my name is Philip Massé. I'm working at the Bakwen Institute in Belgium, and I'm one of the participating experts to uh, the subtask B of PVPS Task 15. I will just briefly introduce um, the, company, the company I'm working for. So the Bakwen Institute is uh, located in Brussels. It's a small applied research and strategic consulting company. Uh, focusing exclusively on solar PV. Uh, we, are we have developed an expertise in uh, market analysis, but also in um, advisory uh, services to the industry, uh, active in energy in general, but in PV also. And we have uh, in-house experts and a global network of experts all around the world, uh, which allows us to have um, good insights on what happens um, in, in any country or any, any continent. So um, as mentioned by uh, the previous uh, presenters, I will today speak mostly about business models, but I will also uh, give you a bit of insight about the, the size of the JPG markets compared to the, the global PV one. I will then move on to uh, the values that we uh, associate with the BIPV. I will then present uh, the results of the report the main results, actually, because there is a lot of content in this report, um, focusing on existing business models and in uh, the fourth part on other business models which could be potentially uh, developed and applied to BIPV installations. And finally, um, I will mention some points that could explain why the, the development of uh, BIPV and of the BIPV market and also of uh, BIPV specific business models uh, is not working today. So um, as an introduction, I wanted to, to show you this, this figure to, uh, to demonstrate that even though um, the global PV market is uh, booming, as uh, Michiel mentioned already, uh, with almost 100 gigawatts last year and a bit of a slowdown probably this year, but still still impressive uh, figures. We we can see that the BIPV market is actually uh, totally uh, negligible, both when we talk about uh, the global PV market, but also when considering it as a as a part of the construction market. In in none of these markets, BIPV has a real impact and as uh, really uh, manage to, um, to penetrate and the market and become a, a, common, a commonly accepted technology. Whereas, as uh, demonstrated by previous studies, it has a huge potential in Europe if we uh, consider the existing uh, building stocks and also the building stock which still uh, needs to be, to be built. But so far, we have approximately, uh, taking into account numbers of last year, achieved less than 1.5% of this maximum theoretical potential for BIPV. Um, so that's why it's very interesting and very necessary to uh, develop business model which can increase the attractive attractiveness of this technology and, uh, and foster uh, market development. So the results I will uh, present here are coming from the report we published a few months ago and that you can find on iaprps.org. Uh, in this report, we analyzed uh, cases and defined business model applied in these cases. We also um, investigate the question of 
other potentially uh, applicable business models. We also um, investigate the regulation surrounding uh, the APV uh, business model and impacting them. Also, we talk about barriers and we, pro we produce recommendations to the APV stakeholders. So um, we we started from uh, various cases, then actually ten cases uh, from different locations in Europe, with uh, which we try to have a um, an ex exhaustive uh, overview as, as much as possible with various locations, various building usage, and also um, con new constructions as well as uh, renovation projects. Then we we uh, con we conducted uh, interviews with key stakeholders, typically uh, building owners, but also if, if possible um, the provider of the VHV installations. And from the analysis of the results, we, uh, we schematized the, the business models applied to, uh, to these VIPV installations. And that's why uh, that's what I'm going to, to present you uh, in, a few, in a few minutes. But one of, one of the first uh, interesting insights I would like to share, uh, because that, uh, that was something which, which come, came up uh, often in the discussions with the various VIPV stakeholders, is that even though they recognize that yeah, the added value of BIPV uh, is made of the three main points, which are its ability to generate LTT, its um, ability to, to fulfill functions uh, which are devoted to building components, and finally to, um, to increase the reputation uh, of uh, the, the building it's, uh, it's installed on because of uh, the added, uh, the added green identity, and which are real uh, improvement compared to usual BIPV systems. When uh, we look at the cases we analyze, um, we will realize that even though they, so those uh, those building owner point out this um, green status as the main as the main driver of their uh, BIPV project. Most of them are not able to include uh, this in their business model and to value uh, really this um, this aspect. So um, I will present you four business models, typical business model we have witnessed in the ten cases we analyzed, and then I will uh, introduce you to potentially viable business models that we developed also uh, in in this paper in this report. Sorry. So the, the first uh, business model that you can see here is what I would call the, the, the classical one. Actually, uh, this is exactly the same that would be applied as well to uh, a regular APV installation with um, uh, a main value coming from the, the PV electricity produced uh, by the system and uh, an under-exploitation of what, what would be defined as the uh, green identity. In this, in this business model, um, there is a, a significant uh, regulatory risk as in many, uh, many European markets, because we focus on uh, Europe, there is still um, a high reliance on financial incentives, incentive support schemes such as Feeding tariffs of uh, or green certificates for the electricity produced by the by the system, and there is an enormous uh, dependency on the ability to to self-consume the TV production. So we see first of all that this business model is nothing specific to BIPV, which is quite of a, a, a disappointment in regards to the the willingness of of the building owner to to actually uh, put forward the green uh, status or the green identity, as we call it. And in addition, there is, there is a significant, significant risk. In addition, as you can see uh, here on the, on, the, on the list of main features, this, this business model is um, most of the time only applicable 
if the building owner actually occupies its building. It means that uh, when when there is a, a multifamily housing a building, for example, with tenants, it's extremely difficult, except in very uh, few specific cases and in very specific locations, to uh, to install a BIPV system for a building occupied by tenants and to actually make it a profitable a profitable business case for both the owner and, and the tenant. So this, uh, this business model has been witnessed for uh, more than half of the, of the cases which have been, which have been analyzed uh, in Europe in this report. Um, the, the, second, the second business model we have, uh, we have identified and schematized here is also quite straightforward. And actually, just, uh, it's just about renting a share of the building envelope to, to install a, a BIPV system. So in this, in this business type of business model, the building owner um, sh uh, rents a share of its, of its uh, building envelope to typically, uh, in this case, a utility company, which will install the BIPV system and own it for a, a certain uh, number of years, typically 15 years. And during this time, of, uh, during, the, during these 15 years, they will, be, uh, they will take charge of the opera operation and maintenance of the installation, but they will also acquire all the production of the BACV system. In, in, uh, and in counterparty, they will uh, pay a fee a fee to the uh, to the building owner. So actually, this uh, this business model, even though it is uh, very um, not unrisky for the for the building owner because he is not relying on any uh, financial incentives or or any uh, performance of the system, it it does not it does not uh, put forward the the renewable. Uh, LCD that is produced by the system, and it also fails at uh, taking advantage of the again the green identity. Even though we displayed here this uh, this potential green identity identity sorry on the on the on the figure, it's extremely difficult for the uh, for the building owner to, to take advantage of it. Um, and again, in case there is uh, there is a tenant who is occupying the building. He doesn't have any any benefit from this uh, from this system and installation, and so there is absolutely no incentive for a tenant to uh, to get involved and to uh, to push for the installation of a BIPV system. So. Um, the second, the third uh, business model we witnessed during our, uh, during our analysis is also a type of uh, third-party ownership-based uh, business model. And here it's, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit more complicated because the the building owner, uh, which typically occupies its building for uh, Regulatory reason again, making this this business model applicable in the case of occupation by a tenant would be extremely difficult, and, and the most of the regulatory framework in, in Europe are not uh, adapted. So in in, in this case, uh, quite uh, quite as, as in most uh, leasing leasing agreements, the the building owner. Uh, Installs uh, allow uh, another company, a leasing company, which could be also the utility, but could be also another another type of company, allows the leasing company to install uh, a system on its on its building envelope. Um, but in this case, it it takes advantage of the solar uh, solar PV LCT, and um, it pays a monthly fee. A monthly fee to the to the lessor, so the the leasing company who installs the the PV system. Um, 
in this case, again, it's, it seems to be interesting for the, for the building owner because the risk is limited when it comes to uh, any, any reliance on the financial incentives. But not, not only because there are other, other, uh, other barriers which, which could be overcome with such, uh, such business model, such as the high upfront cost and the lack of access to capital for the, for the building owner. So it, it, it could be a way if, if, we, uh, if we develop a more, a more uh, easy way to introduce those, those business models to, to some markets to, to reduce the perception of, of the risk for the, for the people willing to install those, to those BIPV systems and to potentially uh, increase, increase the development of the market. Uh, even though, again, the, the building owner is uh, dependent of his ability to self-consume the electricity, so it's not uh, applicable to all types of buildings. In the case of a company, which occupies the, the building during the day and at the time, so when the, the production of the, of the PG system is, is, is at its highest, shouldn't be a problem, but in case of residential building, it, it's not always uh, straightforward. Then um, another disadvantage is that um, in this case, any, any financial incentives would actually benefit the leasing company because this company is the owner of the VIPV system. So the, in, in case of, uh, in case of in, unlikely increase of financial incentives, uh, the building owner would not, would not benefit in, in any time, in any way of, of this uh, modification. And finally, again, and it's quite in contradiction of what uh, the BIPV stakeholders told us during the, the, the interviews, this business model do not take advantage in, in, in any way of the potentially uh, the potential green identity that that it shows that uh, a BIPV system can can uh, can provide to the, the building owner. So talking talking about green identity, in one uh, in one of the cases we analyzed, we we uh, finally identified a type of business model which was taking advantage uh, somehow of this um, green green identity. So in the case where um, the building owner rents uh, its building, typically uh, to a, in the case of an office building, he could install and own a BIPD system. Um, and for, for which the production would benefit then the, the, the tenant. And he could actually charge um, a higher rental price to this, to this tenant for, the, for, the, for, for, it, for allowing him to occupy a building uh, with a green identity and from in, for benefiting from renewable uh, electricity and also potentially, if, if the tenant is able to, so it, it would allow the tenant to um, also increase and uh, sorry include this uh, green aspect in its communication. So this uh, such such business business model seems like a, a quite um, quite appealing one because it, it looks like a win-win situation between the tenant who pays a slightly higher uh, rental fee but benefits uh, from green electricity and also uh, a potentially uh, green green uh, identity and also it's a, a win for the building owner because um, there is limited risk as long as it's not relying too much on 
on financial incentives uh, linked to the to the BIPV uh, BIPV system, and as long as the the investment cost of the BIPV system is not uh, too important, because actually it's it's still not clear if um, the demand there is a demand on the, on on the market for um, or such a, such a, a green a green identity, but uh, especially how is it possible to uh, to value this green identity? And the the premium that that the owner can charge and can apply to the rental price is not uh, always able to cover the the initial investment cost. So they they might not be uh, there might not be a profitability. Uh, for the building owner at the end of the, the lifetime of the system, but uh, until today it's it's difficult to define to determine because uh, no no uh, no system has been installed for a long period enough. So this this uh, business model, which is the only one to, to take advantage of the green identity, would also be uh, a way to uh, to include. Uh, tenants into into the business model, whereas in the other in the other business model it's not it's not such a, such straightforward. Um, so after this this uh, four uh, business model which we have actually uh, seen being applied on actual cases, we uh, we de we developed and defined two two other potential business models that could be applied. Uh, to BIPV, so the the first the first of them is kind of a, a, a modification of a of a leasing agreement. So in this case, uh, which is uh, in this case which is called on bill financing, um, the building typically the building owner occupies its building for a regulatory revision and to simplify to simplify the analysis. And he enters the contract with its uh, regular uh, regular utility company, which will actually um, enter uh, in a contract with a, another man and an installer of the APV system, who will install uh, the system to the to the building of the of the building owner, um, or but it, it, the utility will assume will uh, assume the cost. Of, of installation, it's, it's kind of a of a renting uh, similar to the renting renting case, but in in this in this case the the building owner does not pay back the utility company uh, directly. Actually, it, there is a, there is a reduction on its on its uh, electricity bill, so the price. Per kilowatt hours is actually slightly reduced compared to to the, the previous scenario where it, it didn't have any uh, BIPV system, and the utility company is supposed to be able to uh, to generate revenue by um, by actually ma making the the kilowatt hour paid by the building owner higher than the what we call yeah, the LCOE of the BIPV system. So this um, this system, which have, uh, this business model, sorry, which have not been witnessed yet, would be uh, not easy to design because th there would be uh, some regulatory uh, adaptation necessary. But it would be actually um, extremely. Uh, it has an extreme extreme potential in the sense that it would allow. To overcome multiple barriers, so uh, higher front cost, the low access to capital for the building owner, but also it will uh, it will it would um, uh, leverage the brand recognition of the utility companies who have already privileged relationships with the building owner who might be um, quite uh, quite risk risk averse um, and would be uh, Quite suspicious towards a new technology such as such as the uh, ATV. In addition, in the case of um, in the case 
of selling of the building as the the BIPV system would be linked to the to the to the utility uh, contract, there would be the possibility to transfer the uh, the usage of the BIPV system from the previous owner to the new one in a quite simplistic way. So the uh, the, the, the current building owner who entered the contract with the utility company uh, would not be stuck in it. So it also, it also limits uh, and reduces the, the risk perception associated with this uh, uh, BAPV system. However, again, they, it's not straightforward all and it, depend, it depends on the, the type of integration, but it's not straightforward how the, the green identity aspect would be, uh, would be exploited. Um, finally, the, the latest um, business model we, we, um, we present in this, in this report is what, what we could potentially call BAPV as a service. So instead of um, thinking of a product in installed on a, in, in the building envelope and uh, benefiting from the, the production or renting the space, the BAPV system would be simply bundled in a, in a package of services, uh, for example, um, energy monitoring in the building or uh, uh, the development of uh, demand side management tools to save energy within the building and maximize the self-consumption of the, uh, the PV, uh, PV production. So uh, in this case, there, there are multiple uh, possibilities, but uh, typically the, it presents the same advantages as the previous uh, business model with limited risk and uh, the, the overcome of multiple barriers. And it would allow uh, any, in, in any case, uh, the tenant or the owner to benefit from, uh, from green, uh, from green electricity. But uh, without the ownership and then without the, the financial incentives uh, here, uh, linked to the, to the, to the BIPV uh, installation. Um, so I, I invite you to, to, uh, to dig into the, the report itself to, to, to learn a bit more about, about this one. It's, it's not easy to, to summarize it on in, a few, in a few minutes. Um, then as as briefly mentioned by, by Nikhil in, the, in his presentation, and um, we, we defined and uh, identified the main obstacles which actually uh, prevent these um, BIPV-specific business models to be, to be developed and to be uh, financially attractive. So as, as, uh, as the, the, the most uh, Straightforward one, we could we could point out the, the lack of collaboration between the stakeholders. Most most importantly, the PV uh, the actors from the PV sector and the actors from the construction and, and building sectors who do not uh, communicate uh, enough, which leads to um, high transaction costs, uh, loss of time, of course, and 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 in the worst case, non potentially uh, non-optimized BIPV, BIPV system with uh, problems during the installation process leading to, to important uh, underperformances. Uh, we, we can also point out the, um, the resistance to change of the building sector and the construction sector and uh, yes, their lack of awareness, which is actually uh, linked to the, to the structure of uh, of the companies active in this in this sector, if if we look at the European uh, the European uh, continent, more than 90% of the of the companies active in the construction sector are actually uh, made up made of less than 10 people, which uh, which can explain the fact that it's difficult to to educate them and to to attract them towards uh, new technologies um, and. And uh, it leads also to higher 
custom, customer acquisition costs because it, it, it takes time to, to convince them and it leads also to a, to a high risk perception to leading to a high, artificially high uh, installation cost. Other, other obstacles you can mention is again the inadequate regulatory environment which, uh, uh, which prevents from uh, aligning the incentives between for example the owners and tenants of the building. Uh, it reduces the confidence among stakeholders. Um, and finally we can uh, again point on the, the lack of, of uh, standards and um, common, common practices. Uh, which which leads to loss of time, but also high insurance and financing financing costs. Um, so to conclude this this presentation and to to present also the the main the main findings uh, the main conclusions of the report, we found out that uh, even though the BITV debt cost is quite limited compared to the the total cost of the building, so we can. We uh, identified in one of the cases that it was only one percent uh, of the total cost of, of the building uh, for the BIPV system. Um, so even though only few BIPV specific business model exist, and none of them fully take advantage of uh, all the values linked to uh, this uh, system. So the, the three the three main main uh, main ones. PV uh, LCD generation, building functionalities, and what we call the green, the green identity or green status. So, what what is needed, and it's also expressed in the recommendation that you can find in the report, is we need a paradigm shift. Uh, BIPV should be considered as building components rather than uh, PV elements, and they should not be considered as the solution to, uh, to limit the environmental uh, footprint of buildings, but one among others. We, we often hear, for example, that the regulation uh, called uh, net zero energy building in Europe will, uh, can, can trigger a market, but if we, if we, uh, if we analyze, analyze it in more detail, we will realize that actually the most um, the most profitable, profitable way to comply with the NZ regulation is investing right now in energy efficiency, uh, efficiency uh, invest in, in uh, solutions rather than uh, renewable on-site renewable electricity production because simply the the the, the criterion are not uh, um, are not low enough in terms of uh, kilowatt hour per square meter and the. The, the, the regulation is not designed uh, well for BIPV. Then um, that's, 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 that's why the regulators have a crucial role to play. They can really uh, make BIPV more attractive as a building component, and they can also uh, to uh, ensure the profitability of the business models into the uh, BIPV installation. Uh, they can increase the, the ways for the owners uh, of the buildings or of the PV system to value the production of the of these of these systems in the sense that today the real, uh, it it relies too much on the ability to to self consume its own production. So even though you have a neighbor which is a heavy heavy uh, electricity consumer, you are not able near allowed to uh, to sell him uh, uh, your PV production, even though he is willing to to buy it. Uh, and finally, as previously mentioned, we need all the IPV specialists to closely uh, to closely collaborate with uh, all actors from the from the construction and building sector. So, uh, thank you for your attention. And I would just like to mention that in the next month, in early 2019, we will uh, publish another report, uh, will which uh, will aim at helping decision makers to to design adapted and profitable uh, business models for BAPV uh, systems. Thank you.